Hey, fourth graders and third graders. So fourth graders, you're gonna read this book first, and then third graders, you can choose to read this book next. Um, you're gonna get more books coming in uh, the drop-off uh, next Tuesday. But read your first book on your, your time, and then read this book next for the third graders. But fourth graders, you're gonna start with this book. It's called The Chalkbox Kid by Clyde Robert Bulla. And so I'm gonna read chapters for you throughout um, a couple videos. And then um, I'll also read you the questions from the comprehension question packet that I've sent you to. So you are more than welcome to listen to me read the chapter, or you could read a chapter, then listen to me, and then read a chapter, whatever you want, or you could just listen to me read the entire time. Um, so I'm gonna read a chapter, then we'll read the questions, and then I'll read the next chapter. In this video, I'm gonna try to read chapters one, two, and three, so there's less videos. All right, so I'm gonna start with chapter one and it is called The Room. All right, so Gregory heard the clock strike. It was an hour till midnight. His birthday would soon be over. He went to the door and looked out into the street. Shut the door, said Aunt Grace. I thought I heard the car, he said. Gregory said his aunt, the cold air is coming in. He shut the door. He went back and sat by her on the sofa. His tablet and pants and br paints and brushes were out on the table, but he didn't feel like painting. He sat there and tried to watch television with Aunt Grace. It had been a long day. So far, it was very worst birthday. He had wanted to go with mother and daddy and were moving to another house, and he hadn't seen it yet. If you go with us, you'll just get tired, mother had said. I want you to stay with Aunt Grace. He had thought she didn't remember what day it was. He told her, I'm nine years old today. I know, she said, and I'm sorry we can't have cake or party. There's just no time. We have to finish moving. But he kept thinking there would be something for his birthday. He went to the door again. His time, this time the car was there. Mother was getting out. She came up to the door. She had an old clothes and she looked tired. Hello, Grace, she said. Thank you for keeping Gregory. Are you ready, Gregory? He picked up his tablet and paints and brushes, and he was ready. They went out to the car. She sat up front with Daddy. Gregory got into the back. They drove across the city. Gregory went to sleep. They went out, went out to the car. She sat up front with Daddy. Gregory got into the back. They drove across the city. Gregory went to sleep. Oh, <laughs> sorry. All right, so when he, was, when he woke up, they had stopped under a street light. The light shone on a house. Is this it, he asked. This is it, said Daddy. Daddy had lost his job at the factory. Now he had a different job. That was why they had to move. The house was small and it needed paint. It looked as if it had grown out of the sidewalk. There was no yard at all. They went inside. Gregory saw boxes and papers. He saw bare walls. You better go to bed, said Mother. Where, he said. She showed him a room. His bed was in it. His chair and table were in it too. He asked, is it, is it mine? Do you like it, she asked. Oh, yes, he said. It used to be a porch, she told him. We had a wall put in and the window. So there was something for his birthday. There was something better than cake or a party. Go to bed now, said mother. She went out and left him there. He sat on the bed and looked at the room. It was not very wide, but it was very long. It was a big room for such a little house. He looked at the floor and the walls and the ceiling. He looked into every corner. This was what he had always wanted, a room of his own. He heard a clock strike. His birthday was over, and it was the best birthday he had ever had. What was one of your best birthdays? One of my best birthdays, and I know it's a big surprise, I went to see Taylor Swift in concert. That was a good birthday. All right, so that was the end of chapter one. All right, so I will read the questions and then just pause it throughout. All right, so number one, with whom did Gregory stay on his birthday? All right, so number two, what had his parents been doing all day? His parents. Why didn't they let Gregory go with them? What did Gregory do as they drove to the new house? Number five. Why do they have to move? Six. What size was the yard at the new house? Seven. 
What was Gregory's birthday present from his parents? Number eight. Before it was his bedroom, the room had been a... And then number nine. Why did Gregory think this was the best birthday he had ever had? All right, so that's the end of chapter one. So read chapter one, answer the questions, and then I'm going to continue reading chapter two. So you could pause it and read chapter two another time. All right, so number two. All right, so it starts on page 11. All right, so number two is called Uncle Max. Gregory woke early. The day was coming in. He lay there and looked at the room that was all his. By the bed was the box he and mother had packed. His things were in it. He got up and began to dig in the box. He found his old yellow robe and put it on. His tablet and paints and brushes were on, on the table where he had put them last night. Without making any noise, he went into the kitchen and brought back a cup of water. He sat down on his table and began to paint. The paper in his tablet was too small, but he painted a red house that wasn't bad. He painted a sunflower. That was a little better. Mother came to the door, he asked her. Do we have thumbtacks? What do you want with thumbtacks, she asked. I want to put my pictures up, he said. She bought him some, thumb some tacks. He put his pictures up on the wall. They looked good there, even if they were too small. Now the room looked like it was really... It was really his. He and mother and daddy had breakfast. I'll make more coffee for Max, said daddy. Gregory asked, is Uncle Max coming here? He's, he is, said daddy. Then I'm going out, said Gregory. Where, asked mother. Up the street, he said. I don't know, said mother. Oh, let him go, said daddy. He just wants to see the new neighborhood. Isn't that right, Gregory? Don't you want to see the new neighborhood? Yes, said Gregory. He went out. The air was cold, but it felt good. It felt like spring. He walked up the street. It was Sunday morning, and not many people were out. He saw a grocery store. He saw a few places that looked like garages or small factories. The next block got better. There were more houses and street trees. In the block after that, he came to a school. It was the Dover Street School. Mother had told him about it. He would be going there. He walked a few more blocks, and then he went home. His Uncle Max was there. Uncle Max was 20. He had a red beard, and he played the guitar and made up songs. Most of the time, he was out of work. Well, he said his loud voice, here comes the Greg great Gregory. Here comes the paintbrush kid. Hello, said Gregory. He went to his room. The door was open. There was another bed in the room. There was a guitar on the bed. Mother called him into the kitchen. Uncle Max will be with us for a while, she said. He isn't working now. He needs a place to stay. Gregory looked at her. He won't be so bad, she said. It's not my room, he said. It's his. It's yours too, she said. But he knew how that would be. Why don't you like your Uncle Max, she said. He thinks he's important, said Gregory. He is important, said Mother. We all are. He thinks no one is important but him, said Gregory. He went outside. There was concrete all around the house. Even the wall across the back was concrete. There was a gate in the wall. It was painted green and ugly green. He could hear Uncle Max playing the guitar, and he kicked the gate. It's so hard that some of the paint fell off. All right, so that's the end of chapter two. All right, so here are the questions for chapter two before we move on to chapter three. All right, so chapter two, number one. What pictures did Gregory paint with his watercolors? Two, why did he ask for thumbtacks? Three, who was coming to visit them? Four, what kind of buildings did Gregory see in the neighborhood? Five, which, should, which school would Gregory attend? Six, write at least three things you learned about Uncle Max. Seven, what name did Uncle Max call Gregory? Number eight, what was different about Gregory's room when he came back? And number nine, why didn't Gregory like Uncle Max? 
All right, so we're going to continue reading. I'm, I'm going to read chapter three and then answer questions, but you can pause the, the video at any time. All right, so number three starts on page 17. So the number three is, is titled The New School. In the morning, mother and daddy got ready for work. She cooked in a restaurant. He, he was a guard in the bank. Mother asked Gregory, do you want your uncle to go with you to the new school? Gregory shook his head. Don't you want someone to help you get started, she asked. No, he said. I've done it before. He went to school. He found the office. A woman there sent him to room three, and that was his room. His teacher was Miss Perry. She said to the class, we have a new boy in our room. His name is Gregory. She asked what school he had come from before. North Lake, he said. Is that here in the city, she asked. Yes, it's a big school, he told her. It's bigger than this. He liked Miss Perry. He thought he was going to like Dover Street School. He began to learn the names of the boys and girls. At noon, a boy named Vance came up to him on the playground. Vance was the biggest boy in room three. Did you say you went to North Lake School, he said. Yes, said Gregory. What made you say it's a big school, he asked Vance. Some other boys and girls had come by. They were listening. It is a big school, said Gregory. No, it isn't, said Vance. I've been there, and it's not as big as this. It looks bigger, said Gregory. Well, it isn't, said Vance. You like to brag, don't you? It wasn't bragging, said Gregory. I just said it was bigger. I didn't say it was better. He stopped. No one was listening. Vance and the others had gone away. After school, he walked home alone. Uncle Max was there watching television. Gregory went into the room, and, there, and there, that was his and his uncle's. There were pictures on the walls that he had never seen before. They were big red and black posters of race cars. Gregory's pictures were nowhere in sight. He went back to the front room. Where are my pictures, he asked. The television was turned up loud. Uncle Max tur turned it down. What did you say? My pictures, said Gregory. Where are they? They're still there, said his uncle. You put your posters over my pictures, said Gregory. Don't you like my posters, asked Uncle Max. No, I don't, said Gregory. That's too bad, said Uncle Max, and he turned the television up again. Gregory was angry. He wanted to go into the bedroom and tear down all his uncle's posters, but that would only make things worse. He went out back and tried to find something to do. He shook the gate in the wall. There were, was a wire that held it shut. He began to work with the wire. He worked until it came loose. He opened the gate on the other side. Gate. On the other side was a part of a building. The building had burned. One room was left. It had three walls and no roof, and there were bricks all over the floor. It looked as if no one had been there before, or for a long time. Gregory went in. He walked through spider webs and dust. He piled up some bricks and sat down on them. He leaned back and looked at the sky. It was peaceful here and he began to feel better. He was not quite so angry now. All right, so that's the end of chapter three. All right, so we will answer the questions now. I'll read them to you. All right, so number one, what did Gregory's parents do for a living? Number two, who was his new teacher? Number three, what did Gregory tell the class about his old school? Number four, why did Vance argue with him? Number five, what happened to the pictures Gregory had put on his bedroom wall? Number six, what did Gregory want to do with Uncle Max's poster? Number seven, how many walls did the burned building have? And number eight, what did Gregory do that made him feel better? All right, so answer those questions. You can reread chapter three or listen to my story again. All right, so I'm going to make another video for the rest of the book, but just read it, or you could not read it, um, but just take your time answering the questions. Maybe spend, read one chapter a day. It's up to you, I, and then bring all of this back when we see each other again. All right, see ya.